So, hi everyone, I'm Daniel Pope and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Submer. Um, and joining me today is Mark Miyoshi. I'm the uh, director of R&D at Submer here. So what do you, what is your focus as director of R&D, Mark? Um, well, our general focus is to, well, we really work on anything that's forward looking, but currently we're focused on CPU or IC level thermodynamics. And um, we were challenged about a year ago to show the path, technological runway for single phase immersion. And um, because there was this general idea being thrown around that there was a limitation of 400 watts for single phase immersion. And we took that challenge head on and tested a bunch of technologies to see and innovations to see how we could break the limits and really push things to the next level and how single phase immersion can cope with 1000 watts, 1500 watts, etc. So the first stepping stone in that journey is what we can see here. This is the forced convection heatsink. Mark, can you tell us a little bit about what the forced convection heatsink is and how it works? Yeah, so we uh, we started with the uh, a standard 1U air heatsink off the shelf. Um, and we took that, we modified the, the thin pitch and the thin thickness. Uh, we optimized that for immersion. And then we added a force convection, as an external source of force convection. We had the option of going with either a pump or a propeller slash fan type of thing. And we evaluated that and we ended up going with the fans because, or the fans and the propellers because um, with the fans, you get the added benefit of redundancy. Should the fans go down, there's enough space in here that you still get natural convection is allow or is able to pull enough fluid through here to still get adequate performance. So it looks incredibly simple and yet the performance is through the roof compared to what occurs in a natural convection environment right. with no acceleration of the fluid. Yep. Um, I guess the cost of building this component is pretty low and the goal is that different uh, fan and heat sink manufacturers can produce it at scale. It's an open design that uh, we give to the industry to be able to uh, accelerate and enable these TDPs and in single phase immersion. Mark, how, how do we, if these fans fail, how do we replace this component? I mean. It yeah, looks so simple, but I w I'd like to understand and everyone to understand operationally what that's like. Yeah, so I mean, should the fans fail, um, basically you would just clip off this housing with the fans integrated and then you just attach a new one on and drop it back in. Okay. It's really simple. Cool. So it's like a clip-on device. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so thank you very much to Intel to, for their support in this collaboration. We're obviously showing this at the at the Intel booth. Um, and also thank you to Shell for supporting with their low viscosity fluids, which is also being used here. And with that, we hope to have showed that there is, with little innovation, it is very simple to support these high D TDBs in single phase immersion. And with that, um, I'm now gonna go and hunt down uh, Mohan Kumar from Intel so that he can give us his insights about this development. So I'm joined here at OCP, one of the major industry events, OCP Global Summit, by Mohan Kumar, um, fellow at Intel. Mohan, why is this important for the industry and for the future of cooling silicon? Uh, single space immersion needed to, needed to have headroom so we can accommodate silicon and the usages that are emerging in the future. And Intel is very excited to see demonstration of a force convection for the first time, at least to my knowledge, that is showing uh, close to 900 watts being pulled here. And I think I gave you the challenge of getting it to 1,000 watts, and you have gotten us up to 1,000 watts with uh, single phase emission cooling, so congratulations. Thank you, thank you very much. Submer, data centers that make sense.